Jack Catterall then looking to make up for lost time against the man he describes as a legend. The legend who looks great, has looked great all week, but how much is under the bonnet for this man who first won a world title 16 years ago? How much of the all-time great is left for him to produce here tonight? The first thing that the legend has to do is try and nullify the jab of Catrol, which is such an impressive sh uh, shot. Really is the variation, the speed, the power. Always has his opponent where he wants him, so Linares has to find a way of, like I say, nullifying that jab. Get the rhythm behind his own jab, try and look for that right hand, take his head off the line. Really is an intriguing matchup. Now, I second that, and I think the intrigue for me really comes from Linares has been such a great fighter for so many years at lighter weight. Letting his body thin out a little bit, and he's really got a passion for sport. He wants to be here. How's his speed advantages maybe coming up from the weight? How's that going to cause problems for Cattle, who's usually the faster man up at all? Uh, the fi uh, super lightweight, even. He's usually the faster man, you know? We look at each other at all these early stages. I think he learned that from the early stage of his career. I, s I see him in the time of McKinney, put so much into the earlier. Tyrone nearly snuck back into that fight that night. And he's improved and learned so much. Oh, both fighters find good hands there. Changing the level with his lead shoulder. Jack trying to get a different look there, and he gets one. As he plants his feet down, and Norris switched off a little bit at the edge of range. The pace of the fight will be interesting. At what point will Linares put his foot in the gas and equally on the flip side? Good levers though from Cattle there. Not loading up. The heads look like they come together a little bit more. It's the speed that they're going to come together because Linares has got such quick reaction. When he goes, he tries to burst. Linares coming into this on the back of three defeats, but in good company as he tries a big right hand, the second of them. Up. Almost getting through, and there's a cut there by the eye, close to the bridge of the nose of Linares. And you'd think it come from when their heads come together about 30 seconds ago. He dabbed at the eye as soon as they came away from that exchange. Even though there's not a lot of punches landed, and even then, really, I feel like it just looks more like a Jack Catterall fight. It looks like he's beaten him to the punch, and he's, he's fighting on his terms, on his pace. Many young fighters out there as well, budding fighters. You have to look at the footwork of both men here, the base, so centered. Very rarely do they fall over the front foot. You see, they're so well centered. Got solid foundation, everything flows from your feet. And I do like Catterall's tactics here. I like how he's sitting off fighting on his terms, constantly making Linares adjust forward and giving him a bit more of a target. I hope Peter McGraw's on the side. I definitely learned a lot from this sort of performance. Nice lead, right hook from Catrol. And it just seems to get outscored Alares, and then Catrol seems to escape with the shot. Bit better work, but still, again, he just rides the shots, Catrol, nice and cleanly, comes back to the centre of the ring, and back on the half step. He's boxing nice and Catrol on the back foot, but I do you think Linares will be happy with the pace of this fight, obviously, in the twilight years of his career. That was a nice right hand straight down the in the middle of the southpaw stance, lovely shot. But you think he needs more than Norris, he's, he's catching a clean shot, but then he's going quiet after, and then look, pause of action, a one-two from Jack. <laughs> Getting the rhythm behind that lead hand. Just creeping forward, Linares. That's where he's got to step that front foot across and look for that right hand as he does there. That's the shot. Better right hand from Linares there. I think when he, when he slows his feet down a little bit and then goes quick as when he's catching Jack off, you know, unaware. So quick of his so reaction how he got out of the way there, Jack Catterall. It's a real chess match just though. Speed and wit between Catterall and Linares here. High level chest, this. there's that right hand. He was a little wide, wide, wild with it, but that's what he needs to do with Linares. Step across, Catro again, though, moving nicely. He just sort of slips down the side and grabs hold of Linares or moves his feet. Doesn't waste much at all. Catro, so accurate. We throw something, 
most of the time he lands, and that's good work with the left hand. I think did a good job at riding that, but I think it'll be interesting to see how the sort of power power carries at Super Lightweight, especially at this stage of his career. But let's be real, this is a fighter that no matter what good name you see on his record, he had them hurt or he had them down at one point in the fight. He might have got some losses, but he's a very dangerous man in Alvarez, and he can throw hair-splitting punches so quick, that's where the damage is for him. Yeah, it was only three fights ago that he went in with Devin Haney and badly hurt. Haney at the end of the 10th round. So quick with the jab. Struggling to land it though. Carroll's matching him, he's matching him with his reaction. Oh, good back oh, out. Good left hand as well. And Linares backs on to the ropes involuntarily, and this is a big chance for Jack Patrell now in the fifth round as Linares tries to cover up, desperately holds on. It didn't seem like the biggest shot, but it was the reaction. That's what they say, the first thing to go from a fighter is your chin. And we've seen it there, it didn't look like a big shot. It was sharp, it was accurate, but very hurtful. Big finish to the round for Jack Catterall. The shot's coming his way. He's got double his attack to Linares. Every time he goes with a single shot, the two shots, he's just too quick on his feet, Catrol. So he's got to double up the attack. He needs to go again there, Linares. It's a bit too easy this for Catrol at the minute. But that was better from Linares. You see, when he sort of held his ground, let Catrol throw first and then quickly responded with two fast shots. He got close, he landed. But too often he's, he's letting Catrol just slow the pace down. Grind down the time and just outpick him with that lead hand. It's been lovely tonight. Decent work though from Linares there. He was throwing the right hand to the body, having some success. He went again, so trying to up the tempo, trying to get close. But again, Jack Catchell finishing the round really, really well. Nice left hand. Sharp response from Catchell after some success for Linares at the end of the round. You can see real frustration now from Linares. Doesn't really know what to do. He needs to try and double up the attack. He lets one or two shots go, but falls short. He needs to double the attack, try and get close to Linares. Because, uh, sorry, Catra, because it's far too easy at the minute. I don't think it'll be long, though. He doesn't need to. I think it'll be long till we see Catra start going through the gears. Just up it. Slightly. Lovely one, two. Again. Lovely one, two, through the pipe again and again. Finishing the round as he did the previous round. Big attack again from Catrell and the crowd lifted by that. Right at the end of the round once again. Is there a problem for Jack with impression? How it looks from the outside? I'll be right, I feel, oh, good shot from Lara's land there. Probably one of the best shots of the fight so far. But I feel in this competition, in this fight, I think Jack's way in control right now for the pace, the rhythm. I do genuinely believe the Josh Taylor fight was a bit closer than people, you know, reacted on the night. But I do think that Jack did edge him out. But there was close rounds where he was outboxing him, but then there was big shots that was landed and more action and it was getting rough and aggressive. This is more of a, a clinic of how to do it. How to edge around the ring and constantly be one step ahead, one step ahead, one step ahead. Sometimes Very important. It, but sometimes that little bit of time is perfect for a boxer. Your hands might be a bit healed, your, your, your spirit might be up a bit, you might have done what you need to do in your private life to really kick on. I think Jack's in a great place now to really push on this stage of his career. Lovely body shot. And no less in importance, it's his chance now to start earning some big money. Yeah, of course, but I feel like with a fighter like Jack, he really wants to achieve, he wants the legacy, he wants the great nights, the big fights, and the titles to go with it. Last three seconds, and Jack Catrell is cagey as ever, and a warm embrace from the man that he himself called a legend. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds in Liverpool, we go to the judges' score totals. Steve Gray, 117-111. Olina Pumibailo, Giuseppe Corderani both scored about 116-112. to 112. For your winner, he's still the WBA Intercontinental Super Lightweight Champion, Jack El Gato Catterall. 
had a shot, a shrug of the shoulders of Jamie Moore in the corner. It was what it was. He did what he needed to do to win Jack Catterall and to protect those big fight nights to come against the likes of Regis Progre or Devin Haney or any of the world champions. He's taken a huge step closer here tonight.